So from time to time, we are going to take questions that we see in the group and we're going to discuss them. So this question is from Sherry. And she says, does anyone here manage with just an all natural route, vitamins, exercise, et cetera, really tired of the medication and its side effects? Sherry, you're in the right place. So Martin, let's yeah. dive into this one. Yeah, let's run with it. So Sherry, I, you know, back in when I got sick, it was 1977, 78 and so on. And my bad years lasted quite a few. I think my worst year was 1989. So I took a long time figuring out that the mainstream medical approach, which you're calling the medication and its side effects, will not help. Um, my symptoms were different. I wouldn't call myself fibromyalgia. I just had a general breakdown caused by mercury toxicity. The reason I'm sharing that is uh, there is a way out. I'm completely free. There is not a medication in my life, as in pharmaceutical medication. I do take supplements, quite a bit of it. And the road from the sick to the well person involved four things, toxicity, malnutrition, stagnation, and trauma. Had to deal with all of it. I'll start with the trauma. Trauma is stuff that gets into your mind subconscious, usually in childhood, but it could happen anytime in your life. Traumatic events. These days, PTSD gets thrown around a lot. It's that. It's a problem that de develops either through traumatic events or just some innocent remembrance from childhood. Like mom will refuse to give you a dessert until you finish your dinner and you will determine that you're unlovable and your mother is a hor horrible person and it gets stuck in your subconscious and has to get released. There are many ways to deal with it. Uh, I favor EFT, which is emotional freedom technique, body talk, emotion code, neuro-linguistic programming. There are multiple ways to get there, but you need to get ways to clear that. A lot of people with fibromyalgia have a problem with their amygdala in the brain, which is the, it's the guardian of your response. It's whatever comes at you, amygdala is the one that triggers the response. And the right reaction is to pause and contemplate and decide how you're going to react. Well, actually respond. The react is when you just react without any conscious decision. Anyway, we can talk about amygdala some other time. If you want, ask a question. Interact with us. Ask, what, what is this amygdala business? How do I reprogram it? We can offer some help. Stagnation, that usually happens when you can't exercise, can't walk, can't move. Your body moves less effectively. But the number one problem that I had to solve was the toxicity. Industrial age toxins get into us from childhood and they, they get actually acquired even from the mother. Through the placenta, we get a starting gift. So especially first and second born, ch born children have worse uh, condition than others. And then uh, childhood injections, playing with the wrong kind of toys, licking lead painted items or playing with mercury or having it injected in you or who knows what else. Stuff happens. And all of that industrial age toxicity, including volatile organic compounds and plastics, they all have to disappear from your environment and be detoxed from your body. One of my favorite things, I use that every day. This is a thing called Masterpiece. It comes in a bottle, five drops of that twice a day, and you will see phenomenal shift. It's zeolite. Zeolite is a binder. It attracts to itself the um, toxic things, whether they're metals or plastics, and they'll be coming out of your body. And the last one, 
the nutritional side these days you really need to watch what you eat uh, the most inflammatory foods are grains especially wheat and dairy industrial dairy from northern breed cows like Holsteins and Jerseys in America that's pretty much all of the dairy you could get better by going to India or going to southern Italy where the buffalo milk is prevalent but here not much of a chance so yes I am one of your examples and there are many others we have helped coached great many people get from the dependence on the toxic world to independence of it living freely without the burdens that the modern industrial society is created scott said that in another recording a while ago you are a canary in a coal mine some of us are more sensitive to the industrial toxins than others and we need to figure out how to keep these things out of our environment out of our bodies otherwise we suffer the consequences and i would like to add one thing if i may martin to what you said and that is and i this is something i don't do and i hate the idea of doing but i think is incredibly important and that is journal if you had a flare up yesterday what did you eat an hour before, eight hours before, 24 hours before. What did you, did you run? Did you charge up the stairs? Did you have a fight with your significant other? So a journal of food and drink and a journal of events. And maybe you'll start seeing a relationship. Mm. It's not gonna be the whole thing, but I think a lot of our problem is what we eat and what we drink. A lot of it is you know, the relationships that we have, and yeah. of course, what our environment is. And you may have a hard time changing your environment right now, but you can certainly change your, you know, I mean, if you eat old Dutch chips every day or Doritos every day, stop, see what yeah. happens. If you're drinking Coca-Cola every day or you're getting drunk every night, like stop. These are all things that are, are really obvious not, you know, they're not helpful, right? But yeah. most of us don't know. Like there are days when I'm bloated, when I'm in pain, I, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so hard to get up. And then there are days where it's like, oh, I feel like I'm 22 again. And why is that? And if I, I know I had ice cream or I had a milkshake or I had a hot dog or I, like I had something I shouldn't have had and the next day I was in pain. Whereas if I didn't have that, or if I had bananas and fruit and, um, uh, you know, steak or something or fish, you know, all of a sudden I'm not in pain. So, but I, but we're all different. We all need to know what it is that works with, with our body and our system. And the only way is to document it. So I think it's really yeah. important. Like, what did you have for breakfast? Did you have a snack? What'd you have for lunch? What'd you have for dinner? How did you walk a mile? Did you just lay around all day? Did you know? Did you watch TV? Oh yeah, I really watched this horror story. You know, this horror movie, and oh great, so that got your adrenaline all going, and you're all like freaked out. And in the group, I did a post about music because this hospital did this experiment where they played this really nice music, and they noticed an improvement in the uh, in the rate of recovery of everybody. So I posted it and I've had some interesting conversations. My theory is if you have high active bang, bang music that just gets the adrenaline rolling, like acid rock sort of stuff, uh, that's not going to be helpful. <laughs> now, there's a number of people that said, no, Scott, I love that rock and roll. And I just, I listen to it all night and I feel great. <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, well, you have fibromyalgia. Do you really? So is there a difference between, but here, so here's the question, Martin. If I am, have not been able to turn off that switch, so I am not in that repair st state, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm used to listening to Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin and all my favorites. And then I try and change it to listening to 
of harp music and waves, I'm probably going to go crazy because it's like <laughs> yes. right? I so agree. Listen, I, 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 I would say that there are Rolling Stones tunes and Led Zeppelin tunes and uh, I don't know, pick one, Pink Floyd you mentioned, um, that are absolutely lovely and peaceful and harmonizing. And then there are others that are not. So you decide, right? It's it's the not what happens, but how you react to it. If you find mm. something that it puts you into a relaxed state of mind, then <laughs> by all means do more of that. It's right. it's the there, there's a balance, right? Fight or flight or rest and repair. If it puts you into a fight or flight mode, you're going to regret it. Do less of that. Anyway, I oh. as, as you're talking, you know, more points come to my mind. Mold is one of the worst triggers possible. I didn't mention it. I should have heavy metals, right. mold, and food. Poisoned, toxic, industrial food. Those are the most common triggers. We have triggers and thresholds. Good language about that. Triggers is everything that gets at you, hits you. The thresholds represent your re resilience, your ability to withstand the assault of the environment. Well, so Martin, would you say most people are beyond their threshold if they're in this group? Well, this is known as the flare. By the way, it's spelled flare as in like the flames flaring up. Uh, and that is when your immune system somehow goes on on a war path, everything gets triggered. Well, I should say it this way. Histamine is the signaling molecule that triggers inflammation. And many, 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 many symptoms get triggered by histamine. There is actually a chart somewhere behind me that has a picture of histamine-mediated conditions. And this could be in your nervous system where you become anxious or nervous, in your stomach where you start throwing up, in your reproductive organs where you're going to have horrendous periods, or in, um, in your joints, you're going to have arthritis, joints swelling and uh, hurting, and so on, right? Like all the different areas that the nerves control can get affected by a histamine release. And what is the trigger? The trigger could be changing the barometric pressure where a storm is coming in. It could be you walking by somebody smelling of perfume and it triggers you like that, or cigarette smoke or gasoline smoke or something like that. And it could be flashing lights, it could be loud music or just the wrong kind of music. Those are all possible environmental triggers. And then you can have internal triggers. You start thinking about something. You can actually put yourself in a flare just by visualizing vividly something in your head. And then you can, of course, do it through food and other ways. Anyway, the journal is a great idea. Remember this. Uh, gluten, if you're sensitive to it, takes about 10 days to get out of your body. So if you think that your Friday night pizza is uh, just to blow off some steam, it's a horrible idea because you never get out of being glutened. Right. Yeah. Good point. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, look, look for more videos from us with questions that you've got. And you can tag Martin Patella or Scott Patton in the group if you've got questions that you really want us to uh, to know about. We It's pretty much the two of us that are approving all of the posts. So um, if you just put it in the post, we're going to we're going to see it, make a note of it and we'll do a video on it. But uh, thank you for being in the group. Thank you for supporting everybody. Thank you for having a positive outlook on a very difficult situation and um, I guess uh, we'll just quit with our, our mission, which is to restore vitality to you and to the planet. And we look forward to many more uh, videos and, and questions to come.
Thanks. Talk to you soon.